our final topic for today was the, the meme stocks. I imagine we'll be covering these almost every day, at least in one regard, if, if there's anything interesting that develops. Uh, there's a story about Mudrick Capital that got blown out of the market with AMC. They had a, they had a complex strategy of equities, bonds, and derivative products, uh, mostly selling calls for, from, for, their, for them specifically. And um, uh, what happened was the, the market kind of blew up on them and the price of those calls they were selling went up um, ridiculously. So it kind of blew a hole in their strategy. So they lost about 10% over the course of like two, three days. The Reddit community was very mixed about that. Some people were like, oh, they weren't really trying to hurt us, but they shot themselves. And other people were like, you know, they're, 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 they're shitty, fuck them. You know what I mean? So there's, there's definitely a, a divide on that. But I think that's because a lot of hedge funds are being viewed as bad, but not all hedge funds, not all short positions are, are inherently bad. If you look at the amount of short interest on in a lot of these stocks, you'll see they actually are very, very low. So they've stopped putting big short positions on these stocks. Any short positions that do exist are, might just be representative of um, of the fact that the stock they think the stock should be low for. At, you know, so not all of them, not all of them are bad, right? I'm not going to say that all, not all of them aren't, and people aren't trying to use naked shorts and trying to still pump the market down. But what we're seeing now is a lot of lot less uh, short interest on all these stocks. And um, one of the other things that are interesting is is talking about how individuals hedge funds might be trying to gas this trade by, by that i mean they're buying lots of call options and by doing so forcing the broker dealers to effectively uh have to stay delta neutral and buy lots of shares to make they can pay out if they these options are exercised and by doing that you kind of have the reverse of a short squeeze you're forcing them to buy lots mm -hmm. and lots of shares so you're adding all this extra fuel to the fire you're, you're adding all this extra buying momentum pushes prices up and then when prices start to sell, traders have to release those positions to stay delta neutral, as well as clients just selling them straight to the market to take profit. So then you get these, you know, these they're just gassing these big ups and then these big downs, which we talked about yesterday is like a nine day trading cycle. So, uh, which I find is interesting that I thought, and I, I mean, I was telling you, but I think this trade might be getting hijacked and how people may be trying to capitalize on this and how retail investors might get lost in the middle, getting just blown up and blown down, you know, taking those huge swells. And if they're not prepared for them, you know, getting their boat swallowed up and everything masked and all. So, um, I thought that was interesting today. And I thought that was just an interesting phenomena, right? Cause I, I, I think the, 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 the core premise of this trade makes sense. Uh, and, I, and I definitely think there's is some fraud there. Uh, and definitely there's some very sketchy, you know, inner workings for, for companies like Citadel and Palifax and repo markets and stuff like that. Definitely sketchy stuff. Um, I think that the trade itself as it is now um, is developing, is it's evolving in a different way. And I think it's evolving into a mainstream overcrowded trade where people are finding ways to apply leverage to this to make big, easy money. Uh, and my fear is, of course, retail investors. I don't give a shit about hedge funds. I don't give a shit about the big banks. You know what I mean? That they, they make, they take that big risk. They get blown out. Good for them. You know, I don't, I don't give a shit. But the retail investor, I do care about because a lot of retail investors don't, don't think about the downside. They don't think about the risk, and they just throw their money in there. And, and you know, if, if the if the markets are being pumped like this, you have to time it right. You have to play. It. Otherwise, you know, if you time it wrong and you're buying it at a peak, you're gonna get blown up. You're gonna disappear. Well, let's so talk very about careful. something uh, coming up. So just today, which is uh, June 11th. The stock went down 5%, finished off at above a plus 5.88%, and apt markets is up 1.61%. So, so at a, it went to a low of 208, finishing at a high today, even after hours at 237. What's coming up right now is the reconstitution of the Russell index. So they're looking at the Russell 2000 having GameStop and AMC move over from the Russell 2000 to the Russell 1000. Now, what that would occur would be this reconstitution is they're supposed to be coming out with news on these reconstitutions and who's going to be moving over on June 4th, 11th, 18th, and the 25th. And on the 25th is when the reconstitution occurs, and that's going to be in June. So every Friday of this month, we should be getting news from the Russell Index of who's going to be moving around. And what is the benchmark for being able to move from the Russell 2000 to the Russell 1000? Well, Yahoo tells us, and it's $7.3 billion market cap. That's what they need. GameStop at this moment, per Google Finance, its market cap is at $16.76 billion market cap. So what happened with Tesla? When Tesla was going to be put into the S&P 500, Tesla got hiked up. What's going to happen with the Russell 2000 of GME, AMC moving over to the Russell 1000? Well, guess what? Those shares need to be brought back into the market. 
So those shares need to be shored up at that time. And then those shares get to be moved over to that new index. So that's going to be interesting. And when that occurs, um, I'm expecting a hike up. So by the way, not financial advice. Yeah. Never financial advice, but opinions and perspectives. But interesting. Interesting. I, I mean, <clears throat> Russell, you know, 2000, Russell, 1000. I, I, I don't even know a guy named Russell. So, I mean, all this information is kind of new indicators for us to, I guess, get more behind aside from like, oh, you know what? Like we got Reddit guys going on there and, you know, Wall Street bets and the, these are guys pumping it. No, there's there's real numbers, real, real, um, I guess, what, market plays being made in the background that are yeah. truly affecting the stock aside from just what, you know, some of these Redditors are are, are kind of pumping. Right. I, 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 I think that when you see a lot of these bigger mints, I don't think it's just the Redditors. You know what I mean? Like, I think it started out that way, but I think the Redditors are a part of this, but I think more leverage is coming into the market by bigger players. So, you know, just because you see big swells doesn't mean the Redditors, because the Redditors, remember, they want to hold forever. So when you see these big patterns of up and down, up and down, that's not the mantra of the Reddit traders. The Reddit traders are hodl, right? Hold for dear life, which was turned to a fun fact that was actually a misprint in a text message that i forget somebody had had made and then they just kept it and they, then they called it hold on for dear life but um you know that's the thing like if it keeps pumping and dumping that's that's not the reddit mantra so there, there must be other forces at play uh and i definitely just be just be careful if you're gonna invest in that just be careful just yeah, be just keep your keep your head on your shoulders i, I was reading it and i'm pretty sure it was involving like uh amc and gamestop but apparently the percentage of let's say uh, ret retail investors that are looking at Reddit and, and all these forums, it was, I think at a very low percentage, I think it was like 3%. That's actually like in that market and has the possibility of affecting it. So as we're seeing these climbs, 3% isn't going to affect that market enough to make it climb. Right. right it's it's right. the other, it's the other big players that are in there that, that we have to say like, hey, this isn't society like holding together and we're going to stick it to the, the big institutions. Well, no, I mean, the big institutions are still playing in the same game. If anything, I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of smart guys trying to figure out how are we going to get either our money back? How are we going to keep your money that you decided to put in the market? And at the end of the day, how are we going to pretty much make it so that you guys kind of learn your lesson, get scared of the stock market? I, I, I feel and I say that last part because... The stock market has always been a, a rich man's game. Uh, the lower class, middle class, they've never ever had this great of an opportunity or wealth of knowledge or, you know, information and in order. Accessibility is going to be huge. Much. Yeah, to participate in right. the stock market. So we're having a lot of new investors coming in who they've never touched this market ever before. And I feel if there's going to be a scare tactic to keep, you know, the poor poor, it's going to be to kind of let this one burn and teach them a lesson and, and, you know, playing with the big boys. Well, let me tell yeah. you this. They probably have one guy who's probably a guy that they're just like, Hey, you're an intern. Yeah, dude, just uh, be on this Reddit chain and just tell us whatever Watch they're you. doing. And they're probably paying that guy like 40 K and he's not even sleeping for like three days straight, right. but he's telling them he's a little snitch in the background telling the big guys, dude, <laughs> this is the next stock that's going to get pumped. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's probably pumping like Clover, CLOVS or CLVS, like Clover and and uh, right, all these other Wendy's and everything else. So there's always that one guy. Don't be that guy. The important thing to note is that you know Reddit is is an open channel. You know what I mean? It's not like it's a proprietary trading strategy held in behind closed doors. Anyone can watch the Reddit channels right anyone can watch these feeds anyone can watch wall street bets and go and see what people are talking about what their plans are and sometimes they announce it at those segments like what are your trades for monday what are your trades for tuesday so you know if you're a hedge fund you know and, and you want to make smart money maybe you do think the big short positions will make you money because the stock's overvalued but right now it's not the time for that so what do you do you go the other side all right you play along you use the redditors as signals right as well as other people using it as signals you find stocks that are heavily spoken about that they have plans for then you go ahead and get in that trade early before they run it up and then you get in early you make the profit when it rises then you sell it at the top because you, you you cash out so um i definitely i definitely think you know they're getting smarter because why not if you're a hedge fund with all these resources and you're seeing this persistent trade uh and this 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 open source signaling you know why not 
that's what you know so i definitely agree they definitely think they have people that are just like, watch reddit all day tell us what they're doing and we will try to figure out how to put money into this so i, exactly. I can definitely see that being possible yeah